Hey friends, Pastor Scott here, and uh, we are ready to take on another spiritual practice this week. Uh, and this next week, we are going to look at the practice of uh, listening to the Holy Spirit, learning to listen to the Holy Spirit. So uh, most people, I think, are hungry for guidance, for divine guidance, uh, but not everyone looks for that in the right place. Uh, there are people who are really into horoscopes, uh, thinking that they're going to get some guidance there. Some people are even into like psychics and palm reading. Um, we believe that God desires uh, to speak to us, uh, that God has spoken to us and he continues to desire to speak to us. Uh, prayer, often we think of prayer as us talking to God and then we quickly put an amen on that and go about uh, our business, uh, forgetting that prayer is really meant to be a, a two-way conversation. Uh, it's us speaking to God, and it's God speaking to us. Um, I will confess that when I hear people say, you know, God told me this, or God told me that, my first response is usually, suspicion. Like, I wonder, did God really tell you that? Uh, or was that just something that, that you wanted and, and so you heard, you know, conveniently heard God tell you that? Uh, so I, I can get uncomfortable around people who throw that language around, especially if it's frequent and it's always the same people that are hearing the voice of God. Um, but I'm also uncomfortable with the idea that God doesn't speak, uh, you know, thinking that, that God doesn't speak to us, that makes me equally uncomfortable. Uh, I believe, we believe as, as Christians, at least in theory, that God speaks to his people, that he prompts us, that he guides us by his Holy Spirit. He speaks through his word. He speaks through people. He speaks through nature. He speaks in all different kinds of ways. Uh, and we need to cultivate the ability to hear him speaking. Uh, we need to, to improve as listeners. And so that's what we're going to take on uh, this week. Well, there's a, a couple of things that get in the way uh, of us hearing well. Uh, one of them is simply whether or not we are truly resolved um, to follow the promptings of God. You know, like if we're not really serious about doing uh, what God is leading us to do, then I don't think we're going to hear him very well. Um, one of the, the practices a lot of people talk about is the, the 10 second rule. And that's when you sense the spirit of God leading you to do something uh, that you don't um, deliberate any longer than 10 seconds. Like when it's in your ability to take action, you take action immediately rather than getting stuck in the, you know, kind of paralysis by analysis where you, you filter it through several times. Did God really say that? Am I really supposed to do that? But what about this? No, when you sense God telling you to do something and, and small things, give that person a call, stop and talk to this person, ask them this question, uh, that you respond immediately. So, so that's one of the things we have to resolve ourselves that if, if God is giving me a prompting, I am going to listen. Uh, I am going to say yes. And especially when, when it's hard, when everything in, within me wants to say no. Uh, so we have to resolve ourselves to, to, to heed God's voice. Uh, the second thing that can, can get in the way is um, really a misunderstanding of, of how God guides us. Uh, God, if we are waiting to, uh, for God to like show us the path and make it so clear that we don't have to take a step of faith because it's so illuminated for us by God, we're going to be waiting a long time. Like, like, I don't believe that God lights the path for us so light that it doesn't require any faith. Um, that would defeat what God really wants to grow in us. He wants to grow faith in us. And so waiting on God and hearing the, God, the voice of God is not about like having a, a path that is so clear cut that it's not going to be risky. Uh, there's always risk. Uh, and the second thing is 
waiting on God is not an invitation to passivity. Like we're called to pray, we're called to listen uh, to the voice of God, but we are also called to, to be responsible. And we're called to, to make decisions and we're called to take action. Uh, and so it's kind of this symbiotic relationship where we're listening to the voice of God and we are doing what's in our power uh, to do. A third thing that um, can get in the way of us hearing the voice of God is, is when we only go to him for the really big things. Like we only seek his guidance for the, the life-changing decisions, you know, like should I take this job or this job? Should I move to this town or this town? Should I marry this person or this person? Should I go to this college or that college? When we're only going to God for the, the huge decisions, our ears have not been trained to, to hear his voice. Uh, God wants to guide us in all of life. And so we've got to train our ears in, in the day-to-day -day monotony of all the little things. Like we go to the grocery store and, and we've got this kind of multitasking going on. As I'm, you know, putting the groceries onto the conveyor belt, I'm also thinking, all right, God, is there something that that you might want me to say to the cashier or this person standing in front of me or this person standing behind me. You've just got this, this running conversation with God all the time in the little things so that we can learn to hear the promptings of God so when the big things come around, we know the voice of God. Uh, another thing that we really have to be leery of is um, wanting God's guidance with things that he's already given us guidance on. You know, so for example, the, the uh, young woman who is praying to God, should I move in with my boyfriend? Like, God, is it your will that we move in together? Well, uh, I think I could tell you, no, it's not God's will that you move in together. Uh, that, you know, the sexual relationship, the, the scripture says, is meant to be between a husband and wife. So he's already spoken on that. So if we're praying for things and asking for guidance on things that he's already spoken about, um, naturally, we're not going to hear his guidance. He's already said what, what it is that he desires us uh, to do. Uh, another thing that might get in the way is just a, a misguided conviction that God only speaks to the, the really spiritual people. You know, like he only speaks to the pastors. He only speaks to... Uh, the elders, the deacons, the, the people who are really connected to God. Uh, but for the rest of, you know, the average Christian, he doesn't speak. And, and that's totally false. Uh, God communicates uh, to his children. And through Christ, we are all his children, uh, sons and daughters. So how are we going to get into practice this week uh, with learning to listen to the Holy Spirit? Um, so the first thing I would say is make sure that your prayer uh, to God, your prayer life includes time not only for you to speak to him, but for him to speak to you. Uh, and then the second thing is when you hear his prompting, when you hear his voice, um, try the 10 second rule this week. You know, so when you suspect God is telling you something, he's leading you to do something, uh, jump into action as quick as you can. Uh, don't deliberate any longer than you need to. Just just commit yourself, resolve yourself. I am going to do what God is calling me to do. Um, the third thing would be cultivating this this ability to to multitask. As you're going about your day, uh, having this running conversation with God in the background of your mind all the time. You know, God, what might you want for me in this situation? Uh, and then again, responding when He leads you. Um, and then fourth obviously being in the word. God has spoken to us and uh, it makes no sense to ask to him, ask him to speak to me now when uh, it's very likely that he's already spoken on the very thing that you're praying about. Um, so uh, I want to close with one thing that John Ortberg wrote in his chapter, which I thought was so great. I listened to this. He said, much of the adventure of Christian living involves responsiveness to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Like, this is what makes the Christian life fun. Like, God really is speaking to us all the time. And um, what makes the Christian life an adventure uh, is that uh, every day we get to listen, what is it that you want me to do, God? And, and he speaks, and then we learn to obey and, 
and some really cool things I believe are going to happen uh, as, as we do that. Uh, so let me pray for us. Uh, Lord, I thank you uh, for this time that we're experimenting with different practices. And uh, I pray for all of us that as we hear your still small voice uh, this week, that we would be quick to obey. Uh, Lord, uh, help us get out of our heads. Help us not analyze things to death, uh, but be responsive to your spirit. And so we do pray that you would lead, that you would guide uh, this week. And we pray this all for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, blessings.